please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. He's working it out. Father, we thank you that whatever we face, we do not face alone. No matter how much the enemy will try to make us feel that we're all by ourselves. But Lord, whether we see you or not, you're there. You are Emmanuel, God with us. And God, you've already spoken on the situation. You've already spoken on the trouble. You've already spoken on the circumstance. You said that, and know, but know this, that God is working to the good, all things, all things. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for working it out. Now, Father, we ask for your blessing as we come before your people with this word. Bless it in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Reading from the book of St. Luke, the fourth, the 23rd chapter, verse 4 says, so Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no fault in this man. Verse 14. Said to them, you have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man concerning those things which, were, which you accused him. In the last verse, verse 22. Then he said to them the third time, why, what evil has he done? I find no reason for death in him. I will therefore chast chastise or chastise him and let him go this is the word of the lord you may be seated we thank god for jesus and we thank god for the word of god that gives us a different perspective in life the world has a different system, a different set of standards. And the world, contrary to what we see of the disciples and what God is demanding from us, the world is quick to find fault in things. Matter of fact, we're trained from children to be fault finders. We will find fault with food, such as there's a problem with beef, fish, chicken, milk, and pork. So we raise vegetable processed meat. Our medication that we take is good for one treatment, but it'll kill you in all other kind of way. <laughs> the cars that we drive, the roads that we take, the houses that we buy, the clothes that we wear. It's really how the radio and TV got or gained popularity. Radio and TV are designed as mass marketing tools to increase company market share. In plain English, it's promoting one product as better than the other product and steering people's purchasing power to buy the most popular product over the least possible or popular. I don't know whether you've ever done it, but counted the number of commercials on a station break. I've counted as many as I, th I think 14 or 15 commercials. That's why in, when we look at economics, 
in communities, they like to have designation site stores so that the money stays within the community. When businesses and buildings owned within the community get a circulation of money, it's equally distributing the wealth for that community. And so you want your money spent in the communities that you live in a number of times. Churches, however, aren't caught up in that because churches can thrive anywhere, even though sometimes we do get in the habit of criticizing other churches. So tell your neighbor, not here. Be messy. Turn to your other neighbor and say, is he talking about you? But our message is counterculture. We're not trained to take, we're trained to give. And not only are we giving, but we give sacrificially. We give hilariously. We're trained in the word to be satisfied with the things that God has blessed you with. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In all things give thanks. And let me read that right. It says, In all things. Is that right? Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Think of a situation that is not comfortable that you're in right now. And let's give God some thanks. And we're thanking God not because of the situation, but God is with us in the midst of the situation. Now, come on, take that. We're taught rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Come on, how do you rejoice in the Lord? <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. The people of God grow in contentment and satisfaction. Paul writes to the Philippian church, not that I speak in regard to need, but I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Whatever state, contentment. It's a learned state. And who guides us in this learned state or in this learning process well, it's the same one who guided the church some 2,000 years ago. His name is Jesus, and I find no fault in him. Jesus, in our story, in the book of Luke, had been mocked and ridiculed and lied on and beaten by the crowds and the soldiers. He had previously been denied by Peter and then turned over to Pilate. Jesus was falsely accused of perverting the nation and chapter 23, verse 2, and discouraging the people from their civil responsibility to pay taxes. He was sent from one court to another. Hmm. The message of popular opinion or from the popular opinion was that Jesus was not good for the world. It's the same message that they try to encourage us to say now. Don't Use, you can be religious, you can talk about God, but don't use the name of Jesus. But I'm going to make a statement and you respond, Jesus, who loves you with a everlasting love? Jesus. Who saved you? Jesus. Who sanctified you? Jesus. Who redeemed you? Who's coming back again? Jesus. Mm. Who's your deliverer? Jesus. Who's your healer? Jesus. Oh, come on, give Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. And the world tries to make us exclude his name. But there's power in the name of Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. 
There's healing in the name of. Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of. Jesus. There's reconciliation in the name of. Jesus. There's joy in the name of. Jesus. Come on, give, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Yes. And so the world tries to get us to exclude Jesus, but Jesus was there before the world was formed. In the triuneness of God, he was there when God said, what I've created, the heavens and the earth, it is good. And God's final evaluation was of his work in the, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, it is very good. And God blessed it. But the world would have us to take out the name of Jesus. But who do you call when you need deliverance? Jesus. I've told the story a number of times. But it bears worth telling again. We were at a revival. I was a student at Purdue at the time. And someone said, there's a revival going on. I know the revivalists. Uh, the, the evangelist, I'm sorry, uh, and he's really good. He'll be speaking in Chicago. You all want to go. So four of us got together, got a car, drove to the revival. And at the end of the revival, the, the evangelist said, I sense the presence of death in the room. He said, yes. He said, let's pray and rebuke that spirit. And so we got in the prayer line, and he prayed and asked God to bind that spirit of death. And he spoke life. It was a winter night. It was cold. It was icy. And I remember I was the driver. And I was driving on I-65, and one of the elders, Elder Grayson, older gentleman who was kind of like a chaperone, said, uh, Brother King, Pat that brake. We were on I-65 going back to Purdue, to West Lafayette. He said, pat that, that brake, and I jammed on the brake. He said, no, I didn't say, he said, pat the brake, but it was too late. He had noticed that we were on black ice. And by me patting the brake, and we were right next to a 40-footer. So we were on the outside left lane. The 40-footer was on the middle lane. And we had a patch of black ice before us. I hit the, I really panicked. I hit the brake and tried to stop it by jamming on the brake. But all I did was cause the, the car to hydroplane. It was just skating. And as it's skating, I noticed that it began to swerve and move towards the 40-foot truck and go right in the middle of the truck. And I said to myself, oh, so this is how I'm going to die. But there was a sister, Debbie Keys, in the back who wasn't ready to die and remembered the prayer that had been prayed. The prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. The prayer in the name of he who beat, defeated death. She didn't have time to give us a story or, or, or she didn't even yell help. What she yelled was Jesus. And she yelled Jesus just as the back wheels were hitting the side of the car where she was at. And it hit. And here I'm resigning myself to, oh, this is how I'm going to die. And she said, no, we're not dying yet. Come on, give the Lord a praise. The back wheel hit the tire, or hit the car. The tire from the truck hit the car. And because we were still hydroplaning, but we were actually in the arms of Jesus. It hit the car, and the car just slid over to the side of the road and stopped. 
We didn't call a tow truck. We didn't call emergency. We just started that car back up, waited for the traffic to pass, thanked Jesus, and went home. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Three times, Pilate said, I find no evil. I find no reason for death for him. Three times, Pilate examined Jesus, examined the evidence. And the sermon is dealing with, I find no fault in him. And it's a challenge for us today to do a greater examination of Jesus. And if we find no fault in him, to serve him unabashedly, to serve him with no restrictions, to serve him and not hold back anything. So examine Christ for yourself. Scrutinize him. He can endure the examination. He endured persecution for you and I. He endured the punishment from the Father for you and I. He endured the separation on the cross for you and I. He endured ridicule and mockery for you and I. But I'll tell you what else I found. Like the old Baptist preacher would say, I found him to be a doctor in the sick room. Found him to be a lawyer in the courtroom. Found him to be a provider when I didn't have much money. Found him to be a protector when I should have been dead. Delivered me when I was in trouble. He was a friend to the friendless. He provides homes to the homeless. He is that bridge over troubled water. There is a bomb in Gilead. Ain't it all right? Ain't he all right? He's whatever you need whenever you need it. Ain't he all right? So I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him because he's all right. I find no fault in him. The son of God who came down in the form of flesh dwelt among us. He is the bread of life. He is the shepherd. He is the door. He is living water. He is whatever we need. Thank you, Jesus. But most importantly, I thank you, Lord, that you're my savior. You're my deliverer. You're hallelujah. You paid the price. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that whatever I face, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. You promised me. Oh, yes, you did. That you'd never leave me nor forsake me. And I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Though I'm tired, you give me strength. Though I'm weak, you give me power. I thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And one thing I'm happy about, one day, if I'm still on this side, You're coming back. Hallelujah. 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 He's coming back. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be ready, ready when it comes. Ain't he all right? Don't fool me now. Ain't he all right? He's all right, all right. He's all right, all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. If there's one that doesn't know the Lord, this time is for you. We want to 
encourage you to examine Jesus. You could do it right now. You know your story. You know you rightly shouldn't even still be here walking in the land of the living. But the Lord, you've got your story. The Lord made a way. The Lord protected you. He did it because he loves you. And he wants to spend an eternity with you. If you are here and you do not have an assurance that heaven is your home, I'm going to ask you to come down that aisle. Come from behind the chair. Come from behind the chair. And walk out into the open. And why we ask you to do that is you're making a public declaration that I am embracing Jesus. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. Now don't worry about if you can live up to that. Jesus does the work by the power of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. That's already taken care of. He just wants you to believe. If you're here and you want to give your life to Jesus, come on. There's plenty of room. Heaven is poised, waiting for you. The Holy Ghost is prompting you right now, even as we speak. It's urging you to move forward, to move forward. And if you are in the streaming world, YouTube, FaceTime, or Facebook, give your heart to the Lord. And I want you to make an effort to call the church and let us know of your decision. But if, for those that are here person to person, is there anyone that is not saved that wants to be born again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. You are all right. We find no fault in you. The fault is in us, and as we move away from you, that's where the fault is. But we want to respond to the call. We want to get into the habit of responding to your call, to your word to your direction. The Lord will be so mindful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. If there's one who is born again and would like to be a member of this church, amen. Come on down. If there's someone else that wants to come, you're born again and you want to be a member of this church, come on down. We're going to have a word of prayer. And while we're even praying, we're going to ask that you come down. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this young brother. And there's others that want to give their hearts to you and want to be a member of this church. Bless him, God. Watch over him. Build him. Deliver him from those things that would hinder him. And let him walk in freedom of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to eventually get his name. And put your hands together. Give him a good God bless you. What's his name? Monterius, Monterius Palmer, we receive you into this church. Be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful to the Word of God, for the, to the Spirit of God, to the people of God, and God will bless you. God bless you. Give him a good God bless you. Come on, give him a good God bless you. Maybe seated. Praise the Lord. Thank 
thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website, our Facebook page, or Twitter. 